So I recently just hired a secretary to take my phone calls because I was sick of sitting on the phone all day. And then I started getting some complaints that they were getting talked to but nobody was listening to them. Well, they went and talked to my secretary here and check this out. Dude! You're supposed to be talking and listening, not just talking. Thinks he just owns the world. It's hard to find good help around here. Anyways, welcome back to Weppner Farms Productions. Today we're uh, cutting some fourth cutting alfalfa. It's pretty thick out here, I'd say. We're about, I think, two weeks actually behind schedule on our 28 day cutting. But we didn't want to take five crops, so we cut it a little bit late. It's September 1st, and um, we're just hacking it off. Just pulled up to one of our fields. I was actually cutting all day yesterday. I'll put a couple clips in here from that because I cut some hay that we're gonna bale. So I just got the first field cut off here. We got little Ricky out here doing some tidying. Planning to hopefully get this field dried and baled, get some calf feed, a little bit grassier feed of alfalfa. But he's making his first pass across the field right now. Main purpose of the tether is just get it all flung out so it can dry a little bit easier. But it's pretty thick out here. Hopefully we can get it dry enough to bale. It's um, kind of hard this time of year with all the dew that hits. It seems like every time the dew hits you get another half day behind on drying. So it'd probably take a good week to good weather to get this field dried out to that 15% or less moisture we want for making dry hay. Just picks it up and throws it out. I gotta get this puppy unfolded by properly hitting the right hydraulics and putting the wings down. Alrighty, so now we got her unfolded. Now I just gotta fire up the PTO and then we can start cutting. This is actually always the trickiest part of cutting is actually getting into the field. It's a little more tricky with the triple cutters because you got one cutter out in front of you and you got two behind you. So it's just a little bit more of a process. But now that I got her started, set all the cutters down and should be able to go into here without running a bunch of alfalfa over. Then I'll just have to come back, clean up that little bitty wedge when we get first time around done. Safe to say we got a heavy dew this morning. Okay, we just made it our first time around. Got this corner cleaned up here. I'm gonna go ahead and do the headlands on this end of the field. And then I'm gonna go make my AB line and then do the headlands on the other end of the field and then be able to just cut this field straight. All right, we made our first three headlands. I like to do three headlands on each end just to give myself plenty of room to turn around. I know some people do too, but I think three is superior. So I'm going to go over here. I'm going to line up straight. And this field is actually a really straight field, so I'm going to set it up an A um, to degree. So I'm going to set up a 90 degree straight shot across the field, and that'll be my guidance line. So we've made our first couple passes here on the field and as you can hopefully see that the alfalfa, it looks like it's actually shorter than my top of my cutting. I 
cutter, a cutting machine, whatever you call it. But um, this alfalfa, it's all lodged just because one, it's really thick, it's getting a little bit more mature and we had some a uh, little bit heavier rains and whatnot that just kind of caused it to kind of get packed down. But that makes it difficult to pick it up. I don't know if you can see it and I can get out, get a little bit up close look, but it's not cutting it off perfect and it's very difficult to get a perfect cut when it gets this lodged just because this alfalfa, if it was all standing up straight and kind of fluffed out, it would be definitely a lot taller than what my cutter is. And that just makes it a little bit harder to cut as it's sitting a little bit lower to the ground. I think my receptionist is starting to think about doing the right thing, but just ain't quite there. He's, he's heading her down there to maybe think about listening, but he ain't giving up his, his position where he tells everybody what to do. We're coming up on about halfway of this field and boy these are some beefy rows. Tell you what, by the time we go and actually merge these together to chop them, we're gonna have some hogs out here. I fired him, I fired my receptionist and now he's scavenging. He's scavenging for a new job. There he is. He's not doing a very good job. Thought maybe he'd pick up the broom and maybe sweep out my cab, but He's just sitting there by it. Feels like these are the fun ones. Whopping maybe three acres. Let's set you guys up and we'll see if we can do a little time lapse of the whole field. All right, that was pretty quick. Got her all off in transport position. But like, uh, I'll show you right here in the field while I'm out of the cab. I talk about that lodging and being difficult to cut. You can see some spots where it's left quite long. It's not all over the place, because you can see right here, it's cut fine. It's just a matter of how bad the lodging actually was and how it's feeding through. There's a little bit of long stubble. It's all cut short. But we're getting majority of it. So that's beneficial. So yeah, just head her off to the next field and keep hacking at it. All kinds of road construction around here all the time. They let me in and it looked like everyone was gonna get out of my way which is fine and dandy and nice of them. But fields in my driveway is actually right here. So thankfully they're still working because I would have felt bad if they would have actually gotten like out of my way. And then I just pull in this field driveway here. That would have been a real bummer. Another field striped and we're on to the next. All right, guys, I pulled into, this is our last field of alfalfa I got to cut. Looking nice and thick, just like the rest of it. It's gonna be a really good fourth crop for us here. At, we had the right, right weather at the right time, good rain, good heat and everything. But I'm sure you're sick of hearing me talk, so sit back, relax, grab yourself a cold beverage and enjoy this montage. <laughs>
we go. Making our loop. Making our loop. Here it is. Here it is. Gonna be some if I miss that. All right, here we go. So close here. So close. It's in the end zone. And we are finished. Heck yeah. Finally. It's a big field. It's quite hilly. Lots of diversity in the terrain here. And we're done. Now time to go cut buffer strips. This is the exact reason why I want to take every fence line out. I hate trees, I hate trees, I hate trees. This is ridiculous. How's a guy supposed to farm with trees in their fields? And now my buffer strip is super narrow. So now I'm going to have to shut off my cutter to get around this tree so I don't cut all my beans off. Because I'm going to cut in my beans pretty quick and it ain't going to go high enough to go over top of them. I don't think. Especially when I got to literally drive next to him to get around the tree. So anyways, this is our first cutting of this, um, what did I call it, a buffer strip. And um, we were supposed to cut it a couple times this year, we should have been able to, but this year's been so wet and this is genuinely wetter ground that we just never cut it because we didn't want to mess it up. So this is the first cutting, as you can see the um, box tail looks like it kind of took over, at least for this year, hopefully it didn't smother everything else out. But I see there's a mix of some grasses in there, so I'm not saying that the grass didn't make it, which would be good. And I see there's alfalfa throughout. So hopefully everything we planted is here. And I'll tell you what, the, the uh, foxtail is definitely making some tons out here. Probably gonna end up just baling it up for bedding. Our original plan was to make grass bales out of the grassy alfalfa bales. And either feed it or sell the bales, but the main purpose of the buffer strip is just so that our good crop here, these soybeans, that also look a little weedy out there. So these buffer strips are basically just a test to see if growing some type of grass or something on the outside will be something that yields better than planting corn or soybeans or a more bushel-in crop. So now the goal is to make it all the way back around cut this little strip without hacking off all the soybeans might be easier said than done and it looks like it might actually be a little wide in some spots so i might need to use the front cutter for some of it but right now we're reaching just barely yeah so yeah See how she goes. I do have to admit there is more enjoyable things to cut, but it's not too bad. Let's make in second full pass down here. This is a 60 foot buffer on the bottom. Try it really hard not to clip off our beautiful soybeans over here because that would completely defeat the purpose. But at the same time, we're trying to harvest all of this weeds we got here so yeah I guess uh, I'll catch back in the next buffer strip all right got out take a little walk because I wanted to show you guys something you'll never guess what it is another freaking tree I swear there's just trees everywhere now Granted, this tree's in the buffer strip, it's still on the way for harvesting the buffer strip, but at least it's not out in the cornfield. So now looking out here, the buffer strip, kind of the goal, like I said before, was to keep our crop away from the trees. And right here you can see just that, how it's shaded, and obviously as it gets to be dark, this is all going to be shaded. But you can see right now, it's mainly just the buffer strip that's shaded. And um, 
And you see the corn still getting sunlight, so it's still able to make photosynthesis and whatnot. But looking at our uh, crop here, I'm not seeing much of anything that we planted. So I don't know what's gonna happen. I guess we'll see next spring what actually comes in. Mosquitoes are bad out here. And uh, right now it just looks like a bunch of tickle grass and um, foxtail is what majority of it is out here. I did see where I started where over yonder there was quite a bit of alfalfa but I'm not really even seeing any orchard grass or fescue or much anything like that. Here's a little bit of disease looking alfalfa. It's not looking very pretty out here. But we're gonna get her cut down and I guess we'll see what happens next spring, what comes back. Hopefully at least some of the grass has come back and maybe we'll have to go back in and no-till into this, I guess. But now I'm gonna have to go cut around this stupid tree because it's too big for me to move with my arms and we'll carry on with cutting. So here's a good example, if you can see it through my dirty windshield of what that um, tree pressure kind of looks like in that soybean field. It's not our soybean field, but you can see right along the fence line here and it can be pressure from um, wildlife and deer and whatnot eating it too. But you can see there's not very many beans growing there and that can either be because of one, that they didn't have enough sunlight and too much moisture could be another uh, thing that created it or it could have been just plain, what did I list off? Sorry, I'm distracted by all of this hard work I'm doing. But um, yeah, basically beans didn't grow there and there's kind of the same thing with the corn here or the beans here when they were planted, they just didn't grow to the same as the rest of the field did and that's kind of what the buffer strip is supposed to help fix give us a harvestable crop here that'll hopefully ton better than what the other crop is that we would have planted i can't even finagle my way around this one my dirty windshield can't even finagle my way through there i'm gonna have to i'm literally gonna have to fold her up to get around it this is ridiculous all right let's assess our crop we got out here as you can see, we have very beautiful lush alfalfa, foxtail by the dozen, it's like a little clover, huh? Looks like clover to me. What do we got here? More foxtail. This is the tickle grass. Cause it'll rub on your balls and give you a little tickle. Lots of little alfalfas. You can kind of see, looking for rows. I think that's tickle grass. Not really sure what there is out here. For, I know there is bluegrass, fescue, orchard grass. I don't know, quite a mix. I have to go back to my past video to find out what was really in there. But this is probably the most promising strip we got out of all of them for sure. And I think now that we cut, like if we would have cut this when we were supposed to and kill out the competition, that alfalfa and grass would have grown up a little better. I think it would probably look better right now than what it does. Just got some little alfalfas and whatnot. So I think come spring is probably when we're really gonna find out what's growing out here and what we might have to replant into it. Maybe we'll have to put some more grass here and replant the rest of them because the other ones don't look very promising. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video and if you guys did, make sure you like, subscribe, and give her a share. And uh, yeah, we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.